what's this? Some strange musical instrument I built? Hmm, no. It's the torso for Photon, complete with touch sensor wires. Welcome to Hack a Week. <laughs> It's time to put the sensors for the torso together. The sensors are going to be made from this stuff. This is a insulation with a foil on each side. It's basically a couple layers of blister wrap laminated together with a layer of foil on each side. It's reflective foil and guess what? I think you'll be able to hear this. Let's get the beeper going. Hey, how about that? Anywhere I touch it, I got continuity. So. The plan is to take this stuff, wrap it around this tube with spray adhesive, run wires up and down it that stand off insulated, and when something bumps into it, that makes a contact. So anywhere along this whole surface, curved all the way around, everything is covered with some sort of a sensor. Wires about that far apart. So if you touch it, it goes in the other direction or whatever I decide the program will do at that point. Let's get this glued onto there and move along. First we have to measure the perimeter of the tube so we know how much material we'll need to wrap all the way around and cover everything. I'm going to leave four gaps in it though so I can uh, take this measurement and rest assured I'll have it all. 27 and one half inches. Okay, four equal segments around the circumference of this. The circumference is 27 and one half inches so we want a one fourth inch gap between four quadrants on here. Each one of these dots will represent a one-fourth inch gap in quadrant one, two, three, and four. That will allow me to have sensors on four different sides. So I have left, right, left, right, front, and back. That allows for a lot of control of the robot and how it interacts with things getting bumped into those zones. So we're gonna cover this with that material and uh, one-fourth inch times four equals one. We minus that from the circumference, 27 and a half minus one is, of course, 26 and one half. Now, we want to divide the 26 and one half times four, because there's four segments, it's six and five eighths. So we want four pieces that are 48 inches tall and six and five eighths inches wide. And then we're gonna glue those parallel on each side and keep a quarter inch gap between them. Let's go, four feet. Taking a piece of tape that's 27 and a half inches long, divided it up into six and seven eight segments, and I marked them around the perimeter here. So now I need to get a straight line on there. And the simplest way to do that on a cylinder is to just take a straight edge that's a right angle, and it will kind of self-center for you. Um, you get it reasonably close anyway. That, and you could also make another measurement up here with the same perimeter tape but it will get you really close. The bigger the uh, right angle is, the better. Um, I learned this making model rockets. You put the tube in a door jam and you mark the line for the fins. Uh, fifth grade teacher taught me that. Thanks, Frank. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna just mark it up here and mark it here and that way I know I got a straight line. I'm just going to strike it. It's going to be 
close enough, really. When it comes down to it, it's just a reference line. Hello. Now I'll use the tape again and go around one more time and mark the other increments so that I know I've got those lined up and uh, make it a lot easier to get the lines right. I'm going to spray down the tube with some spray adhesive, but I'm going to do it outside the shop. This stuff is pretty gnarly. Now I'll spray down one of the sheets of insulation. This one's pretty tacky, so I can put it on now. Get this line where it's easy to access. A straight line on. <clears throat> Actually, I think it'll be better from the other side. Get the line closer to me. And if I just line it up on that line in each one of these, I'll end up with a gap between each one. And I want to leave a little room at the top and bottom. I think it's about a quarter of an inch. Temporarily mounted, there's the torso, front, back, and uh, left and right. So now this gets cut back, some bolts get put in here, I string wire, bare steel wire from bolt to bolt to bolt to bolt, and it will be on a standoff, insulated away from this. That'll be the common that leads to the uh, Arduino, one pin on the Arduino, but you know, ground I guess. And then uh, these four quadrants will line up to four bump switches on the navigation of the robot. So it might bump into something and it'll back up, turn left or right a little bit and try again. And if it bumps on the side, it'll turn further toward the left. If it bumps on this side, it will turn further toward the right and try again. That's the basic idea of, of the code with the four bump switches. I've done it on smaller robots. Okay, let's get some screws in this and we'll start stringing this thing up like a musical instrument. You can see I got this right here, this section of stuff and the battery and all that. So let's see what the, all that measures. Looks like that's about, I guess, let's call it two and a half inches high. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So I want to keep all screws away from anything two and a half inches high so I can do the screws at the base above that. And that means that my bump uh, switch, the circumference bump switch that's going to go around here, which is going to be a big band about that wide and be able to get bumped in any direction, held on with some springs. That'll happen later. That has to be about that high too. Right, Sophie? So here at the other end, we want this two and a half inches or approximately <coughs> 60 millimeters. So let's mark this at 60 a few places and I'll put a piece of tape on there for a guide and I'll cut this away okay so here's the idea of what's gonna happen here all right I've got some goodies here I got to show you up close so take a look at these this is a number six screw this is a spacer built for the number six screw. So the number six screw will go into the spacer and it just barely will go through the cardboard. And then I'll wrap the wire right around here in this gap, tighten it up with one of these little nuts right here. And the whole thing gets tightened down on the cardboard and stands off from the other foil about a half inch. Let's check out this dimension to the foil and make sure this is really gonna work before I get started. This looks like it's gonna be okay. It's right on the mark. It stands up above this just about the amount I wanted. Perfect. Now I just have to mark out all the holes around here in uh, three quarter inch increments. 
and uh, start putting this whole thing together. Well then, time for plan B because these, as I kind of realized as I was tightening them up, they're not gonna hold up to the tension of that wire over that distance. I gotta come up with another solution, a different anchor point or some other way to suspend another uh, piece of metal, something off from this surface that can move and then make contact with it. The wire thing is the right application. I just gotta, well, it's the right uh, material. I just gotta come up with the right application. I gotta brainstorm on this one for a little bit longer here. I think I got a solution. Some of this stuff, this new fangled plumbing stuff, uh, I forgot what it's called now, but it's basically, uh, was it Ropex white UV shield? Anyway, it's, um, you know, the flexy stuff. It's amazing how much this stuff will flex into a curve and not kink. I mean, look at that. So I'm going to put that all the way around here, and then I can tension the string on that, go to the other end, and do about three holes at a time and really tension them up and then start over on the next few holes. It'll make it a lot easier, too, with the wire. I can just run it through the back. That's it. Got the insulation ring all the way around. Time to string up some wire. I'm going to put a wire every 20 millimeters on this, so I'm just going to start marking it out now and go around and drill a hole right in here on the cardboard at 20 millimeter increments. But as a test, I'll just do a few for now. going to keep the wire raised up away from the insulating material. Let's take a closer look at that wire. doesn't take much for it to make contact and it's staying tight. So this is going to take me a little while to do, but we'll make it happen. I'm going to get wires all the way around this thing now. Wow. Here's the end piece, if I hang on to this with some pliers, to keep a little tension on it. I'm going to start all the way back here, I think it was. Oh, where am I? Here, here. Start here. Just pull. And each time you take the slack out, you'll pick it up on the next one. Tension them. You see I'm picking up a lot. Slack each time. When you get to the last string, pick up the slack there. All I really need is just minimal tension and uh, having that tension even throughout everything. So I'm going to give it one more pass. Tie this off now. And, uh, that'll be that. What an ordeal. It's like weaving. Now that I've got all those wires strung up on there, I need to uh, attach everything as sensors. So we'll have four quadrants. That's easy enough. I can just run a screw through here with a washer on the back side, connect a wire to it. All of this outer part, uh, these wires all need to be common they all need to connect together. So I think what I'll do just to make sure there's good continuity between all of them is take a piece of copper wire and just weave it in and out of these all the way around and bring it back to a central point and that will be where I'll pick up the whole field of these wires. Left. That's over here. And the back here. Alright, so says the meter. 
Let's see what an Arduino does with all that. I've got a new idea for the design. This is all going to get covered up with a piece of plexiglass, and I'm going to take this old cable that I've got. Came out of the ham radio stuff. I got like seven connectors to work with on that and a plug so I can put a plug on the top and use this to connect it to the head and up in the head I'll go ahead and put the uh, microcontroller and uh, any other circuits like the voltage regulator and the ping sensor all up there so all I need to do is then just run positive negative 12 volts up there and the four leads that come off the H bridges in the old Roomba mainboard so there's uh, four, five, six, six leads. So good enough. Let's get a piece of plexiglass cut out for this. And just let the back hang off the table like that. This piece of glass so it'll go across. Perfect. Just inside a little ways. So I'll just keep that like that, I guess. Mark it from underneath. Kind of close. Keep on the inside line. Alright, let's cut that with the jigsaw. Plastic cover's done. This will get mounted to the bottom to cover up the uh, main board on a couple of nylon standoffs, like so. There's the uh, power switch and the pilot light. That power switch is out of a uh, Wurlitzer organ. Got an old Wurlitzer organ and parting out. There's the plug for the uh, power that runs to the top and uh, communication to the main board down here from the Arduino. That plug will go into it. This umbilical will go up to the top to the head assembly, which will be the next episode. Assembling the head and mounting up a Leonardo model Arduino and a ping sensor. And of course, here's a 9 volt regulator circuit I built from an LM317T. We'll talk more about those next week. And I'm also going to have to make some regulated power for the smartphones. Um, that will plug into the USB port there. I'll probably just use some of those little car adapters that you can buy for like four dollars. They plug in a cigarette lighter. Those are pretty neat. Ready-made uh, 12 to 5 volt voltage regulator. So I think that that's about it for this week. Um, next week I'm going to rewire these sensors and run a wire up through the top. I'll probably use uh, some Cat5 cable to do that. And then as mentioned before, on top here is where the head will go. We'll get the head mounted up and get things really rolling. I got some code written for four bump switches and a ping sensor. We'll get that uploaded to the uh, Leonardo next week. And um, I guess that's about it for this week. So till next time.
Well, now I know the strain limit of the of the wire. How about that?